Hi guys. <coughs> uh, today I have uh, another topic. I want to ask really. Uh, of course, I say this because I stay in Klang Valley, right? Kuala Lumpur, PJ area, you know, I stay in Klang Valley. So that's why I have this question. Do you think... It's, it's really a question, this round. I'm not trying to come up with some crazy rhetorical um, theory or whatever, but I, I, I'm, I'm just curious. Do you guys think that it is still imperative and important to buy a house is it still because i mean now if you are freaking rich then that's another question uh, huh? let's say a standard condominium now it, 1200 square foot is it it'll easily cost about 550000 ringgit 550,000 ringgit do we have the 10% the down payment no because every day we work we gotta pay Najib's 6% GST we gotta pay tolls we pay for food we pay for petrol we pay for everything right we exist to work in order to exist it's like what the fuck <laughs> anyway 55,000 ringgit is crazy for even a manager per se okay it's, it's still crazy amount of money now then this question comes in then you have stamp duty stamp duty I tell you the land office is evil why if if any one of you who has bought a property before that you have paid for stamp duty you will know that they have three tiers hundred thousand ringgit tier two hundred thousand ringgit tier and a 300,000 ringgit tier okay 100 100,000 ringgit beli apa ni proton punya SUV pun tak tahu boleh beli tak kan so why is it 100, 200, 300 because they did not update the stamp duty tiers since I don't know 1970s 1980s they did not update it at all and they could keep quiet about it so they can secretly tax you crazy amount of money why because back then if you spend three hundred thousand to buy a house you are buying a freaking bungalow that means you are freaking rich that means the government wants to tax you a lot more than normal people but now even the most basic of i mean najib's rumor week is like what 300k maybe i got it wrong fake news fake news anyway so no one is in tier one and tier two. Everybody is in the three hundred ringgit, uh, three hundred thousand ringgit tier, and the taxes, the stamp duty fees on that is crazy high. So imagine this: you finish college, you're twenty plus year old, and then you get a job, you get some shitty pay as a start, two thousand ringgit plus or three thousand ringgit. I mean, I get paid thousand four when I graduated, right? Um, you can't even pull through your, your monthly living expenses and then by the time you are 30 maybe you are able to save up a little bit right you're still working and then you need to buy a house and then when you buy a house you think about it you're gonna throw away all the savings that you have ever had and then you still have a monthly installment that is in the range of 2,000 to 3,000 ringgit and then plus your condominium maintenance your water bills, your phone bills, your internet bills uh, your astro bills that's crazy so now you think back the whole thing why do we rush to buy a house? why? I mean, our parents will say, oh, you need to buy a house because it will, the value will go up. Anyone who believed this statement back in 2012, 2013, you all are fucked now, right? Your property value never got up. In fact, those without holding power might let go at a loss because everywhere they are freaking building condos, new ones. You just look at the uh, development density of Malaysia 
and then you compare this just go to Google map just go to Google map and compare against Bangkok against Jakarta against Taiwan you know all this why they are dense freaking dense their city grow basically they grow organically right from a grid structure they grow out like that and there's just no space so buying a house might mean that you know it may it may the value might go up but you look at KL KL is tiny and it's sparse the way KL is developed is very sparse so that means there are a lot of land parcels everywhere people are building stuffs coming up so if you rush out there and buy a condo now because you can't afford a landed I mean no one can afford a landed property now right so you rush out there and then you bought one and then what and then you pay every month you pay and you think that oh 10 years later it's gonna worth more no because 10 years later there are still new buildings being built and when you want to lure a potential buyer to buy your house at the value then they could have bought a new condo instead because a new condo the developer might be giving them you know 10% discount uh, waive their stamp duty waive their lawyer fees and all that why would anyone want to buy your old condo right it's old you don't give discount maybe you can sell cheaper if you want to but that defeats the whole purpose of investment right so does it even make sense to own a house now that's the question I want to ask because to me at this current juncture 2018 if you are a youngster working and then you are like figuring oh no I cannot afford a house but don't worry why even worry that tell your wife tell your girlfriend there's no need to worry about it because there are plenty of houses and would you want to be like your parents you know they grow up in Puchong they bought a house in Puchong they stay in Puchong their entire life isn't that boring right nowadays right I would, I would think that you guys youngsters right, you guys have it so well because there are idiots out there who pay so much to own a property and then they pay their installment of say four thousand a month and then they rent it out to you at thousand eight or two thousand they are basically buying you a house subsidizing it for you and all you need to do is just to pay two months two months of deposit right and then you move your ass in there and then you stay Ooh, I'm someone who stays in Tamantun now and then after two years oh, another thing when you bought a house in Puchong say for example and then your first job was in Sunway good right? and eh, fuck man you switch jobs <laughs> you work in Cheras oh dear right and then after that you switch jobs again you work in Shah Alam the thing is this our lives are limited and I think the less time you travel to and from work you have a better lifestyle if you work in Chiras you freaking move to Chiras opposite your office you 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 you, you change jobs to Puchong you move to Puchong you move wherever you work you are an expat in your own state think about it you're an expat in your own state if that right then your lifestyle from your uh, mid 20s to your 30s or 40s right you can have a better lifestyle because after work you reach home quicker you have more time with your kids you can go jogging you can cycle to work you can save up a lot of money to buy a nice car and you can travel instead of being tied down by your house I say this because I have a bit of a I, I regret buying a house because after I bought my house then only I realized there's there's so much benefit of, of to not buy a house now just rent just stay wherever you want spend time with your loved ones and yeah and the best part about renting is your aircon rosa your aircon spoiled just call the landlord hey remember that 50 ringgit you wanted every month just so it's furnished with aircon yeah get it fixed now right your 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 tiles your pipe
pipings, you got any issue, just call your landlord and your landlord pays for the condominium maintenance, the maintenance fees. Hey, think about it, maintenance fees are no joke. Let's say you your condo charges about 400 ringgit a month on maintenance fee. That is about mid-level, not cheap, not expensive, about mid-level, okay? 400 ringgit a month. How much is it per year? Have you ever calculated that? Per year is 4,800 ringgit. I tell you that money uh, I used to buy, I used to pay road tax even better. I can own a, a car that is 3.5 liters. I can buy a car that is 3.5 liters. I use it every day and it's worth paying road tax for it. But my condo, come on. If, if you don't really swim, if you don't really go to the gym, let's say you go to the gym twice a year. Each time is 2,400 ringgit per gym session. Wow! So, I really want to ask you guys out there, do you, do you own a house first? Do you agree? Do you just bought a house? If you just bought a house, what are some of the things that uh, frustrates you? I mean, some of the things that I just mentioned. Uh, that did, did this thought ever occur to you that, hey, why am I paying so much every month and then uh, and then when I switch jobs I need to jam all the way there you know this feeling of being tied down by something or if you cannot afford a house are you currently renting I need I just want you guys to share and let's discuss because I really think that uh, it has gone to a stage whereby I felt it's a little bit pointless to buy a house now because there are so many out there and renting them makes more financial sense and gives you a better lifestyle because your life is limited right and uh, you look at countries like Germany countries like Switzerland where there's a plenty of housing <coughs> There's no need to worry to, to, to whether you need to own a house or not. A lot of people there, they just rent because to them, what's the point of owning it? Right? You pay for your usage, just like your mobile phone, right? You pay to use it. Of course, if you are very rich, that's a different thing, lah, right? You, you, you are rich and then you want to own a lot of property and then you collect rent or whatever. I mean, that, that's, that's totally another equation, another question. But what I just want to discuss here is just do you own a house and if you do is it a landed or is it a condo now if if, if i if, if you were to give me a choice i, I would say if, if my budget is five hundred thousand ringgit and i found a rather nice landed property then i might go for it because landed to me uh, means if it is for investment purpose at least landed means that um, a freehold land you know is is limited and uh, it might go up but still it comes back to the same question you're paying for it every month and then you get older and older and then you're like oh, what have I done with my life yeah that's what I that's, that's what I felt mm. for youngsters out there seriously just rent just rent it may feel good to finally own a property in May but if you accept but it's just a, a matter of perception when you accept the fact that you are someone who likes to stay in different places you know you move your things around if when whenever you want to then it's perfect yeah cheers